In this hand, I have a $5,000 bill. And in this hand, I have five $1,000 bills. Now, which one do you want? Which one? And what do they have to do with this yummy cup of juice? I'm Kalila Reynolds, and it's time for another episode of Money Mondays JA, brought to you in partnership with Proven Wealth. You'll soon find out. Now, before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to this channel, and turn on those post notifications. Also, subscribe to our newsletter by clicking the link in the description below, and make sure you watch this episode to the end because I have a giveaway coming up. Now that I have your attention, here's what we're talking about today. Stock splits and Caribbean flavors and fragrances, CFF. CFF recently announced a stock split and share prices jumped. And you soon figure out about the money and the juice. Some of you probably already have. So the directors of CFF met on August 27 and approved resolutions to increase the number of shares that the company is allowed to have. That's called the authorized share capital. They also decided to divide or split each of the existing shares by 10. This would increase the number of shares in CFF from just under 90 million to nearly 900 million, effective October 1. However, shareholders still have to agree. It will be put to them at an annual general meeting slated for Friday, September 25. This notice was posted on the JSE website on Friday, August 21. And at the end of trading on Monday, August 24, the stock price jumped 28% to $15.01 from $11.70 on Friday. A week later, on Friday, September 5, CFF's stock price ended trading at $18. That's a 54% jump since the proposed stock split was announced, and it's not even approved yet. Now here's a quick refresher if you forgot what a stock split is or if you're new to the channel. So when a stock split happens, shareholders get more shares in addition to the ones that they already own. CFF has proposed a 10 for 1 stock split, and this means that shareholders will receive 9 more stocks for each stock they own. However, even though you have more shares, they're still worth the same total amount. Think of it like this. So let's come back to the money example. So in this hand, I have a $5,000 bill. And over here, in the other hand, I have five $1,000 bills. Which one do you prefer? They both add up to $5,000, right? So technically, it shouldn't make a difference. But a lot of people prefer the smaller bills because it might be hard to get change or for whatever reason. Some companies do a stock split for similar reasons. The cheaper share price just seems more attractive to potential investors. Now, companies usually do stock splits to increase the liquidity of the company's stock on a stock exchange. And what does that mean? I know liquidity sounds like a big word, right? So let's say that you want to sell your stocks in a company, but the stock price is expensive. Same way that you might find it hard to get change for the $5,000 bill if you're trying to pay a bus fare with it. So you might find the expensive stock hard to sell. No one wants to buy it because of the price. A stock split makes the price cheaper and may make more people interested in buying, which increases activity on the market for that company's stock. So more people start buying and selling it. Tech giant Apple, for example, had a four for one stock split on August 27. The price came down from 500 US dollars for one Apple stock to about 100 US dollars. So for existing shareholders, rather than having one share worth $500, they get five shares worth $100 each for a total of $500. No difference, right? But for new shareholders now, they only need $100 to buy an Apple share rather than having to have to find $500. So you see how this might influence more people to buy. When stock splits are announced, investors often react by buying more of the stock 
in anticipation of the higher number of stocks that they will have after the split. This usually drives up the stock price. And this is what we're seeing happen on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Now, for more information on stock splits, you can check out this other video in which I break down what is a stock split. Now, let's take a closer look at Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances, CFF. It's listed on the junior market of the Jamaica Stock Exchange. CFF manufactures and distributes flavors, essences, and fragrances to companies in the food, beverage, baking, confectionery, and pharmaceutical industries. Since COVID-19, CFF has also started making hand sanitizers. Smart move! CFF supplies its products to companies in Jamaica and also exports to the U.S., Canada, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Kitts, Guyana, Grenada and Barbados. Their largest local competitor is Virginia Dare Jamaica. The company was listed on the junior market of the JSC in October 2013 for $2.25 a share. So if you bought the stock at IPO and kept it up until now, at Friday's closing price of 18 Jamaican dollars, you would have made back your money seven times over. Talk about gains. In August 2014 now, Deramon Trading, another company listed on the junior market, acquired 49% of CFF for 121.2 million Jamaican dollars at $2.75 a share. In February 2017, Deramon acquired another 26% of the company. So this made them the majority shareholder with 75% ownership of CFF. The company has since entered a new partnership with another company that acquired 10% of CFF in a transaction valued at 108 million Jamaican dollars. So as of June 30, 2020, Derriman's shareholding is now down to 65.02% of CFF. And just last week, Derriman announced that shareholders will be voting whether to issue up to 1.8 billion new ordinary shares in an additional public offer APO. That decision will be at its AGM on September 25. And yes, I will be breaking down that prospectus once it drops. Now, among CFF's management are Derek Cottrell, who serves as the managing director. He's also the CEO and chairman of Derriman, and Ian Kelly, who is the chief financial officer of both CFF and Derriman. What else has been happening at CFF? Well, in their 2018 financial year, the company spent 15 million Jamaican dollars, that's about 120,000 US dollars at the time, to upgrade their factory into a state-of-the-art facility. So they can now produce more and do more research and development. Around that time, the Ministry of Health also started calling for people to eat less sugar. So CFF started making new sweeteners with less sugar to sell to juice makers across the Caribbean. The investment in the new factory certainly paid off. Net profit went up by double digits for the 2018 financial year. That same year, the company also changed its financial year end from June 30 to December 31 to align with its parent company, Derimon. Now, though COVID-19 has been bad for some businesses, CFF has benefited from more demand for household chemicals with all the cleaning that we're doing at home and at work. And like I mentioned earlier, they started making hand sanitizers to meet local and regional demand. Revenue for the six months ending June 30, 2020 was 310 million Jamaican dollars. That's about 2 million U.S. And that's up from 226 million Jamaican or about 1.5 million U.S. over the same period in 2019. However, the company expenses also went up. But overall, CFF's net profit of 43 million Jamaican dollars or just under 300,000 U.S., was up 26% over last year. Not bad. A look at the company's balance sheet as at June 30 shows that their current assets can easily cover their debts, even if you don't count raw materials among the assets. The Ministry of Health has declared that Jamaica is now at community spread for COVID-19, so this gives some comfort that if the current economic conditions continue, CFF should still be able to cover their liabilities as well as some expenses. The company's total assets stood at 638 million Jamaican dollars, or about 4.3 million U.S. So how does the future look for CFF? 
Well, after Derriman bought majority shares in 2017, there was mention of a five-year plan that would see the company investing in improving its factory, researching local crops to develop new products, and working to get better prices from its suppliers. The 2019 report tells us that they're still having problems with that last one. I hope this has been solved. Well, the company has so far improved its factory, like I told you before. They've also gained international food certification, and they've developed two new products, a sorrel cordial, which is like a fancy kind of bulk syrup, and they've also done a sorrel extract. This focus on local products may result in some economic gains for the company and for the country. So what do you think? Are you going to take advantage of this stock split? Please remember though, I'm not a licensed financial advisor, so this isn't advice to buy or sell this stock. For that, you can consult a licensed advisor, such as the ones at Proven Wealth. That's it for this episode of Money Mondays JA, brought to you by Proven Wealth. Follow them on Instagram at WeAreProven. And keep watching, I have a giveaway coming up. But first, here's what's coming up on Taking Stock. The Jamaica Labour Party JLP won the 2020 elections in a landslide victory last week, earning them another term in government. But with the COVID-19 pandemic still very much on, there's no time for a honeymoon. The administration must get straight back to work. Business leaders Keith Duncan of the PSOJ and Richard Pandohi of the JMEA discussed the new government's top priorities. And later, the analysts swain on the latest market developments. Pan Jam's shareholders have approved an additional public offer, but the company has decided it's still not the right time. And a Chinese electric car maker, Neo, is shaking up the market. We'll discuss. Now before you go, hit that thumbs up button so that YouTube shows this video to more people. Subscribe to this channel to learn more each week. And if you've learned anything useful today, share with a friend. Congratulations to last week's winner, Gabrielle Henry. You've won yourself one of our Let's Get This Money t-shirts. <laughs> Email orders at kalilaraymedia.com to claim your prize. And guys, if you want one, just email that address to place your order. Time now for today's giveaway, and here's the question. If approved, when will CFF stock split become effective? Answer in the comments. You have until Friday, September 11th to post your answer. The winner will be chosen at random from the correct answers and announced in next week's episode. Until then, I'm Khalila Reynolds. Stay safe.